Hi guys, this is Mo Volans, back for AudioTouch.com with another synthesis-based video tutorial. And this time we're going to be looking at how to create lush analog style pads. Now I'm using Strobe from FX Expansion's Decam Synth Squad. And this is because, in my opinion, this was one of the first soft synths that really sounded analog. We've had virtual analog and uh, virtual subtractive synthesizers for ages now. And in the past, maybe they've sounded a little too digital or a little harsh. It's all pretty subjective stuff, but in my opinion, in recent years, we've really come a long way. And things like you know, Diva, Lush 101, uh, this this sort of synth, it's really starting to sound truly analog. And it's pretty hard to tell the difference between uh, you know, well-programmed patch and these sort of synths and, and the real thing. But I'm going to show you some techniques here that perhaps help you go that extra extra mile and help you make things sound more analog or more authentic, if that's possible. So. I'm using this synth because, in my opinion, it's not just sounding analog, but it also has a really great sort of analog style interface. You can see here we've got this sort of mixer here for the for the oscillators, and I really like this. It takes me back to the old SH101, Juno, and um, uh, Jupiter 8, this sort of thing. And it's a really great, you know, transparent way of, of sort of mixing your sound sources. We've also just got one page, so it's just a single page of parameters. Um, there's, you know, nothing uh, too heavy and um, no hidden menus. Now, it doesn't matter if you've not got this synth, any virtual analog will do. Um, as long as it's got features like unison and a bit of drive somewhere. Um, so there might be some synths that miss some of these features, but the majority of this can be done in any any uh, sort of virtual analog. So let's get stuck in. And currently I've got the patch initialized. I always like to start with just a basic uh, single saw. So we know what we're heading for. We want a we want a pad sound. We want it to be lush. We want it to be sort of wide and thick. And recently, I've done some virtual analog stuff, and we've looked at bass sounds. And I'm going to show you really realistically each sound is only a few moves away from the next. I think there's really five foundation sounds. If you can program a bass sound, a lead, a pad or string uh, being one, uh, a, an analog sort of drum style sound, and an effect, a sort of resonance based effects. You pretty much got all groups of sounds there. You can manipulate any of these into the other uh, within just a couple of moves. So um, if it seems similar to bass sounds that I've made, then it's probably because it is. There's not a huge amount of difference. What we need to start with, though, is you know a, a rich sort of foundation. And at the minute, this single source sounds great, but it's pretty plain. So what can we do to to make it sound you know lusher? Well, we can add another sound source. And you can see here in this uh, display area that we're changing the shape of the saw wave just by adding this other sound. And by doing that, we're adding extra harmonics and essentially making it a richer sound. If I turn everything down, you can see it becomes flat. This is the square wave by itself. And there's a saw wave by itself. Let's mix the two slightly. Now, what else can we do to make it sound lusher? Well, there's a stack uh, feature here, and we looked at this in the Korg Poly 6, I think, and we've looked at it in a few other synths. It's very, very similar sort of feature. If we turn stack up, we start to get that super saw type effect. We can detune those extra waves that have been brought in by a pre-designated pre amount here. I don't want to go too far with it. Now, one of the trick that I like to use to make things sound dustier, if you like, and more analog, is to add a little bit of noise. Now, you know, you can go ahead and add the white noise. And you can see what it's doing to the wave here. But that's a little harsh, in my opinion. So we've got an actual dedicated analog noise circuit here. which is a lot more subtle and sort of subliminal. So it's not really destroying the original mix of uh, oscillators too much. Okay, so that's starting to sound a little richer. We can start to add a sub oscillator.
And you can see that with every change that I'm making, the wave just becomes more complex. Okay, great. So what do, else do we need to do to turn this into a pad? Well, at the minute, it's a monophonic sound. It's a single oscillator sound. Every time I play a note, it's going to move to the next note automatically. And this is no good for playing chords, of course. We're going to need something polyphonic. So down here in the voices, mo vo voices area, we're going to need to up this to, say, 16. I mean, we can keep going, but 16 should be enough to get us going at the start. Now I should be able to play chords. Now the problem is we've got now is that the envelope's not right, the dynamic signature of the sound is incorrect. Every time I'm playing, it turns off immediately as we release the keys, and this is not exactly what we want for a pad sound. We want it to be nice and easy, and really this is the key to creating a great pad sound. As soon as we make this change, and this could be a bass sound, These two changes that I'm going to make now transform us from what I was talking about before, the bass group, straight into a pad or string group. So this is really key. Let's up the attack and up the release. And the further we go with these, and I like to match them more or less, the further we take them, the more relaxed it's going to be and the more chilled out it's going to be. And let's go even further with the release. That's great, but we really want to make it a bit softer at the minute. It's quite bright. So let's use the filter to perhaps knock the top end off. And that's great as well, but really we want it to be dynamic and change over time. I feel that, you know, this is a little bit static and a little just a little bit boring. So if we use the um, envelope here and the dedicated modulation envelope in the filter area and we match similar values to the, um, the amplitude envelope that we've set up, we should get a reasonably easy fade in. I feel that attacks a little too quick, so let's up that a little bit and match it to the amp, amp envelope. And we can even make the attack slower as well. How else can we make it a little bit more interesting? Well, we can add some resonance and we can add a touch of drive. And hopefully this will give you a little bit of uh, warmth and a little bit of saturation. It's really starting to sound nice now. I'm going to up the voices uh, just back to 21 or so, just to make sure we don't get any uh, cut off. And I'm going to add some unison as well. And I just want to make sure that we're not clipping. And turn the drive down a touch just so we're not getting any clipping internally. Great. Now, there's one other thing that I like to do with the synthesis at least, uh, to make things sound a little bit more random, and that's add an LFO to the pitch. Now up here you can see that we, if we click on LFO, we, can, we see a different uh, sort of side to the interface, and we can add some just simple modulation to the fine pitch in the oscillator. Now if we go to the LFO and make it a sine wave and turn the rate up, we're essentially adding a little bit of vibrato, but just makes it sound sort of slightly unstable and I, I, I quite like that effect.
great. So let's take a look at maybe adding some effects on the end of the chain. Just a little bit of delay here. I've got a um, fab filter timeless just in default mode. And this really helps open a pad up. Now, if you want to make things sound more chilled out, you can just turn the cutoff down a little bit. You can up the attacks and the releases. And by, you know, increasing these values, you generally make things sound more chilled. Everything combined there, all the drive and the little bits of instability and the analog noise, make it sound like a real hardware instrument to me. And, you know, you can always mix, you know, some extra sub oscillators in here or some more of the square wave if you want to make things sound a little bit more harmonically interesting. So there you go. That's how you can create a sort of an analog style um, pad sound, lush pad sound. And remember, you should be able to do this with any virtual analog and any sort of echo delay and maybe try adding some reverb and modulation effects as, as well. Next up, I'm going to hit a series of quick tips covering uh, varying mix based techniques and synthesis techniques. Also, I'm going to show you some sampling, uh, sampling techniques that I use personally. And uh, then I'll continue on with some longer tutorials on synthesis. But as always, let me know what you want to see or hear, and I'll try and uh, get into it for you. Cheers.